Last night, I was crying. That was a complete and utter fail. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, Styling the Centuries. My name is Connie and this is a cozy video. So this video is a fantasy thrift flip where I turn some crusty, dusty and musty old shoes from Depop and charity shops, i.e. the thrift shop, into shoes fit for a queen. Yes, literally because my obsession with Marie Antoinette continues. So these shoes are inspired by the shoes that Manolo Blahnik made for Sofia Coppola's film, Marie Antoinette. There's not really a fantasy film as such, I will give you that, but the price and these shoes, you know, they've been living as a fantasy in my head ever since I saw the film. So we're just gonna stretch our imaginations a bit here. So this video comes as part of Cozy, which is the Costume Symposium of 2021, much like Co-Covid last year, if you watched that, I watched that too. I uh, was a spectator rather than a partaker, but now I'm a partaker. And other than my video, there will be a series of other costumers doing fantasy thrift flips as well. And once the playlist is out, I will be linking that below so that you can watch everyone. Also, I am sorry, I don't have a badge for you. I wasn't that organized. So there will be no badge for you to collect during this video, sorry. Now I had the idea for this project when I was making my Beauty and the Beast ensemble and I made the 18th century style bell shoes for that project. And so I hopped on over to Depop to see what heels I could find a steal for. Okay, so if you do decide to use Depop, then there are three main shoe types you want to be looking for when searching for 18th century style court shoes. Firstly, the court heel, secondly, heeled loafers or buckle loafers, and thirdly, kitten heels, which you can see from the inspiration photos, is the most common type of heel used in the film. So the ones I got were these sequin kitten heels, these faux suede heeled loafers, and then I thought I was getting these black suede heels, but the seller ended up ghosting me, but more on that later. Once they arrived, the first thing I did was draw out my designs. Well, my sister actually drew them out, <laughs> because I'm not so hot on drawing shoes and then once that was done I gathered up the fabrics I thought would be good for this project so any pastel or 18th century vibe fabrics. Now in terms of fabrics, beads, notions, blah 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 I have quite a lot so in this little jar here I've got all of these little bows I've also got some flowers um, of a dark blue and a lighter blue variety I've also got this trim, which is left over from my Chanel jacket, which I didn't make a video on actually. I've also got this one, which I used on this little powder puff here. I've got a vast variety of lace in here. And then, of course, I've got my actual fabrics. So I'm gonna have a bit of fun now, deciding what could go with what. The possibilities seem to be endless. So then I went round, yes me this time, and coloured in my designs with the various fabrics in mind that I was going to be using. Pair of shoes number one. For the first pair of shoes, I wanted to create a lilac end result with pink gathering details. So as with my Beauty and the Beast shoes, the first thing to do was create a white base coat of paint by mixing this Liquitex acrylic medium with white acrylic paint and then slap on two layers. I have found that this faux suede fabric is the best to paint onto it as it slightly absorbs the paint for a more even finish. I'm in the garden because Marie Antoinette liked her garden. She liked her orangery, she liked her orange blossom plants. None here. So I've now done my white layer. Now I'm going to do my purple layer, my lilac layer. And then basically I didn't get any more acrylic paint because my sister was like, oh yeah, like I have acrylic paint, I have white. This is what she gave me. Thanks. And then I did two layers of the lilac too. Wow, that's great. I then went back inside to cut out the frills to go under the buckle strap, so use the template I made for my Rubella Frosses dress and cut it out of this lilac satin before putting fray check on the edges, gathering it up and then ironing it out to create the pinked ruffle. 
I also cut out thin strips of this lilac organza and gathered that along one edge too and then of course got out the trusty hot glue gun and attached all of that. This fabric by the way is leftover scraps from my Bridgerton dress so nothing has uh, been bought here. Pair of shoes number two. We're on to the next one. I've got my snack. I'm now in the direct sunlight so I'm definitely gonna have to move. Um, but for the next one, I have to unpick all of these sequins which are all over the shoe. So it's gonna take forever. And then I've got to paint them white again. I'm kind of annoyed because the third pairs of shoes which I actually designed first and was kind of most excited for, the girl who was selling them to me on Depop hasn't replied even though she said she was gonna sell them to me. And I kind of need them. So hopefully, I don't know, hopefully she'll reply. So I then spent the next four to five business days unpicking all of those sequins. I've been unpicking all of the threads and pulling them out of this shoe for the last hour and a half and all I've managed is this bit and then that. So yeah, this is annoying me beyond endurance and I can't do any more of it. So I'm going to do what I probably should have done at the beginning and actually cover the shoes in fabric. Ah, the confidence that ignorance brings. Oh my god! What is that? So as you just saw, that was a complete and utter fail. Hopefully I've edited it in a way that looks funny. Uh, makes it look like I was, you know, it was fun when really it was making me want to put those shoes themselves under the guillotine. Once I'd let my temper cool and the shoes dry from all the Gorilla Glue I'd put on them, I went back to my original plan of painting them. So I did a white undercoat and then a pale pink for the outer layer. I then cut out strips of darker and lighter green striped silk for the pink ruffles and gathered those by hand. <laughs> Um, so these are what the shoes looking like. They look honestly like shite. Um, on camera, they're not coming across as pink as they are in real life. In real life, they're more like a Barbie pink and it just doesn't look nice with this green. It doesn't look nice where I've done it around here. The paint is all gloopy. Can't be dealing with them. So I'm actually gonna walk into town right now, see if they have any more shoes. Off we go. Had to be the windiest day ever, didn't it? <laughs> okay they had shoes in there but they either had a size 4 or a like a size 7 and I'm a size 6 so we're gonna look in the next charity shop Okay, I just went into the other charity shop and success I'll show you when I get back okay so I've just got back from the shops I should have probably opened this before. But I got these red kind of court shoes. They're actually from M&S. They were seven pound, so that's pretty good. And I also went into Tesco and I got these French fancies for the Marie Antoinette style shoot and also this Lambrini. So then, wasting no time, I got straight to painting, doing two layers of white, and then I diverged a bit from my original design here, and instead went for a pistachio green colour to match better with the colour of the pinking that I'd done, and I was so, so much happier with this than the pink. I then cut out quite a few strips of this slightly darker green, some of which I would gather up and make into little ruffles, and the others with which I would use to make bows. I then glued on all of these different components with the hot glue and kind of really just diverged from my original design completely. Once you get to me, yeah. let me paint a picture. I see they don't understand. Feeling like Picasso, she brushing against my hands. Pair of shoes number three. Hey guys, so it's the next day. Please ignore the absolute state of everything. I did my hair in little um, rag curls so that it's curly for um, like shooting the reveal this evening. Outfit is atrocious because unfortunately last night, I don't really know how exactly this happened, but I've managed to pull a muscle really badly in the left side of my back. Last night I was crying. I literally couldn't move past 
like here like I, I couldn't bend forward at all also the shoes arrived yesterday for the final look they're actually a size 5 so they're a bit small for me but they're going to be I think more decorative ones they aren't actually the original shoes that I drew out in my design because the girl who was supposed to be selling me those never got back to me so I had to buy some different ones oh it's, it's just just all going really not to plan is it this video once i was finished moaning about my first world problems i again painted the shoes with guess what two layers of white then in the original design for these shoes i had striped pink and blue for the main body of the shoe but i decided that this was going to be a bit complicated getting the stripes exactly straight so instead went for a pale grey blue on the majority and then did the heel a contrast green I also cut out pink strips of this striped silk and can we just take a moment of silence to appreciate the beauty of this fabric? Thank you. So then with the wider sections I put a gathering stitch in by hand, pulled it up and ironed it to make the 18th century looking frill. I then glued that around the top edge and much like the green shoes tied a bow and glued it onto the front. I also added in a blue ribbon rose but don't seem to have filmed this so I guess you'll just have to wait until the reveal to see that. Yeah. <laughs> 